I'm super curious what it says about me that I am more worried about K-pop stands than I am worried about being around actual hackers. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Soul Entertainment. And today we are talking about DEF CON, a convention for hackers. Largest hacking and security conference with presentations, workshop, contests, villages, and the premier capture the flag contest. DEF CON is something that I've heard about for a couple of years now, even before I really got into obviously doing convention reviews. And the last few years, I just, like always, I just miss it. It's something that just goes in the wind. And because we're officially in summer and officially in convention season, my dog is being a psychopath. I had a lot of people ask me which conventions I was going to be at this weekend. There was three main ones, including DEF CON. DEF CON D23, and VCon. When I told people I was going to DEF CON instead of VCon or D23, they were like, what's DEF CON? I've never heard of that. And then I would explain it's a hacker convention. And without fail, every single one of them looked at me with horror. Oh my God, why would you go to that? Why, why would they do that? The FBI is gonna show up. Why, why would you do that? Why? <laughs> the only person who didn't freak out, okay, was my dad of all people, uh, which is very funny to me. He didn't know where I was going because my dad sometimes forgets. I, I travel all the time, he doesn't know everything. I called him from DEF CON and I was like, oh yeah, I'm in like the lock picking village. He was like, wait, they have that there? Can you buy me a new lock picking set? This is why I am the way that I am. He did get me one for my birthday when I was like 11. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Aura. Now, obviously today I'm talking about hackers, but funny enough, your personal data actually most likely will not be leaked from hackers. It'll be leaked from you signing up for a mailing list. It'll be leaked from you ordering a lip gloss from Instagram. This information just being leaked because they just don't protect their data very well. Obviously Aura's sponsored the channel a lot, so I've talked about how my business phone number has been leaked. I've talked about my email getting leaked. I've talked about how people have tried to access various accounts of mine because my data got leaked, because the nature of my content, I have to sign up for a lot of various little things. And these companies don't always protect my data. Data brokers are making fortunes selling your personal information online and Aura is here to help because data brokers have to stop selling your information. They have to remove it if you ask them to, but they make it incredibly difficult to do so. And that's where Aura comes in. So you don't have to worry about it. Aura alerts me if they find my phone number, social security number, email, what have you on the dark web. They let me know if anyone tries to use this information to access my credit or bank accounts. They even offer identity theft insurance in case the worst case scenario happens. There's a ton of great features to keep you safe online, all available in one app. You can check to see if any of your information has been compromised by going to aura.com slash well to get started on a 14 day free trial. Thank you again to Aura for sponsoring this video. Point with bringing all this up is that I was not concerned in the way that I think others were for me, okay? Now, people are usually concerned for me because I travel alone and I'm crazy, but I did not feel like I was any more at risk of literally anything at DEF CON than I was at any other convention, okay? I was at a, I went to a boxing match this weekend for funsies while I was in Vegas and a fight broke out right next to me. I have it on camera. When it came to DEF CON, I didn't think that I was automatically more in danger cyberly or otherwise by just being at DEF CON. To my knowledge, don't think I've ever actually met any real legitimate hackers. Now I have, obviously. Uh, but prior to this, I, I knew people who were like, I'm a hacker, you know, because they thought it was cool to say they were. But I, I've never really felt at risk when it comes to hackers. I've had a couple of spam emails. If you guys remember my old spam email series, um, I used to get emails where people would claim they were hackers and that they had videos of me you know, watching porn on my main home desktop and like making time with myself. Why would I do that here? That doesn't even make, okay, do I have no decorum? I would get things like that, okay? Or I, when I was in Europe during the Gone Girl cruise, I had someone try and send me a pishing attempt. I, I have things like that, where it's things trying usually to get my YouTube channel or uh, when my Twitter was hacked, obviously. I had my Twitter hacked. Uh, like a year or so ago now. That's why I have Twitter blue for two-factor authentication. I blame Elon for that more than I blame hackers for that though. Most of my knowledge of like modern day hackers are furry hackers and then anonymous, you know, like which I think is the common thread for most people. Oh, you don't think about furry hackers? I think about them fairly regularly. They recently came up in the news <laughs> again, which is fascinating. We'll talk about furry hackers, I think a little bit more in a second, because it does come up. I wasn't really concerned going in. A bunch of people sent me a bunch of like requests of like, be safe. 
And, and like some people were even like computer, uh, you know, security people themselves, computer cybersecurity themselves and things like that. And they were very worried for me. I get it. I probably look like a target, um, but I, I don't, I'm, I actively try to not be a shithead. That usually helps me, I think, not be a target for these things. For example, uh, most of the things that people tell you when it comes to uh, going to DEF CON, um, don't connect to the event Wi-Fi or any public Wi-Fi. I already don't do that. The only one that I think is probably my biggest risk is airport lounge Wi-Fi. That's probably the only one. And I wasn't even at that particular type of airport lounge this weekend, so I really wasn't worried. The other thing that was recommended, just keep your Wi-Fi off and keep your um, Bluetooth off. The Bluetooth off, I never even considered that, so I will give them that. that. That's probably gonna be my go-to when it comes to conventions as it is. The other thing that I saw that was good sense is that while you're at DEF CON or in the DEF CON vicinity, do not access your personal accounts. Just because you identify as a hacker or someone in, you know, cybersecurity, et cetera, you are not like committing a crime by just existing for the record, depending on what you hack and what you do with the information, things like that. Like there, there's, it's a thing that can lead to other things, but by simply identifying as a hacker, you are not committing a crime. There's, you know, white hat, gray hat, black hats, et cetera. We, we're not gonna go into all of that. Uh, I will say that black hat was another um, expo con that was going on. I believe they call it hacker summer camp where there's like three cons back to back to back in Vegas. Uh, and I was just there for DEF CON. But something like this, okay, especially with the connotation of hackers, let's look at historically, uh, especially in media. Growing up, I always thought hackers seemed super cool in media. I like those were always my favorite characters. I feel like for a lot of people as well, it's still kind of seen as like a bad thing. And so when you see a hacker convention, like you get the reactions that I got when I told people I was going there. First off, for the um, uh, badge price, uh, for $180 online pre-registration, that's what I did, and then $460 USD cash on site. A lot of booths were very cash only, understandable, okay? But certain things within Vegas are card only, okay? Like most things are now post lockdown once everyone was worried about the spread of COVID via money. I didn't really keep a lot of cash on me. My intention was not to buy a lot of things. Uh, we'll talk more about the actual con itself in a second. <laughs> I'm just trying to set things up a bit more. Uh, but cash was definitely king here. So if you did want to ever buy something from DEF CON, have some cash on you. Being in the block of rooms, we're gonna talk about some of the you know issues with that as well. But I think just in general, the block of rooms sometimes for a convention as well, whether it's for DEF CON and you are a, a group that can um, sometimes draw extra scrutiny, let's go with that. The extra scrutiny that comes with just identifying as a hacker and attending a convention like this. Sometimes being in a block of rooms is not a good move, you know? Like, yes, you'll get the deal, but do you want to identify yourself in that same regards? You know, I, I've heard the same thing for some uh, people that do uh, furry conventions, in fact, and they choose to not stay in a block of rooms or nearby blocks of rooms for hotels because they're worried about potential retaliation because of how some people feel about furries, you know? So it, it's one of those things where you kind of got to ask yourself, you know, is the rate worth it? Is it worth it to be next to my friends that I know we're all going to be at the same convention? Or am I going to think about, you know, my personal safety, the safety of my things, potentially having another target on top of me? Does that mean the target is right? No, I'm just saying. It's something to consider when it comes to conventions. If you are going to a convention that you know some people have some issues with. Okay, let's talk about the con itself. Uh, Vegas, hot as balls right now, just low hell above balls, probably somewhere in purgatory, maybe 108 on average this weekend was the high. And my friends want me to move there for various reasons. Now, because of the cost of things, Vegas is also very expensive right now. That's why I stayed. I ended up leaving on Sunday, so I don't have anything to review for you for Sunday for DEF CON because I did have to leave uh, because I didn't want to pay for an extra night for the hotel. And the only flight I could get out was at like noon or something on Sunday. And I just decided that that was the best bet because sometimes to keep this channel running, I do have to make smart financial decisions. And that was one of them, was leaving DEF CON a little early. But I ended up staying at Harrow's. That was one of the cheaper hotels that I could get. And that is a monorail stop. So I was able to take the monorail over to the Las Vegas Convention Center. The Las Vegas Convention Center is huge. You heard me talk about it last year when it came to TwitchCon, when it was in Vegas. Heard me talk about it with CES. I also had my card skimmed at the Las Vegas Convention Center last year at TwitchCon. Not here. All of my cards are fine. Nothing happened. I, that's the spoiler. I didn't get hacked. Nothing happened. 
just get that out of the way so no one's like, oh my God, Swell's gonna show she got hacked. I, I didn't get hacked. Literally everything is fine. There's no plot twist that I got hacked. I didn't get hacked, we're fine. Go in, registration. This is the big deal with DEF CON. The badges. I think mine's dead. Let me see, can I turn it back on? It also hates me. I did it wrong regularly. Anyways, this is an electric badge. All the badges look like this. This one says human. There was also village. Um, there was, I think, goon options. I'm not certain. These are the thing that I probably heard the most about DEF CON. Every year the badge is different. Every year it is entirely hackable. You can do different things with it. Uh, but for the most part, it is a little cat, as you can see. And then you also could flip it and it has a Game Boy, essentially, configuration, um, including little buttons and things like that. So there was drama with the badges. I can charge it. I'm not going to, the only charger I have up here though is the one plugged into my computer. I'm not plugging my computer into shit, this thing. But I did charge it with a wall charger, so it is chargeable. Um, it kind of is like a Polly Pocket game configuration, honestly, is how I would describe it. Uh, but what was really cool about this, I have a few clips, I think, of this. We'll talk about clips as well in a second, because I have very few. William is very excited that this event review has next to no B-roll. There was a saving issue where it would save your progress or not save your progress. Every time this thing turns off, as you can see, it's gonna reset it as if I hadn't gotten the QR codes and things like that that I had gotten prior, um, which is annoying. They did have an update, they did have a patch. I just never went and updated it because I was busy meandering. But that's a fun badge to add to my this is just this year, because I'm an insane person. But on there as well, which was cool, is they had versions of the map on there. So you could literally go throughout the convention within the game, as well as going throughout the convention. First day, registration, and then just kind of line con. Again, I, heard, I hear line con thrown around a lot with conventions, and it's funny for me as someone who goes to a lot of conventions, I feel like I know a line con when I see a line con. This did have a line con. Only because the registration line, I went around like, I, my flight got in around 11.30, it got checked in my hotel, immediately came over. Uh, yeah, fairly reasonable time frame. Got, literally walked up, here's my code, scanned it, got in. No wait for me, really. Um, but I understand that at the start of the morning, obviously that was gonna be it. The line con truly was the merch line. I went upstairs cause I was like, I wandered around the floor a little bit. Nothing was really open. It was mostly like a registration day. I think there was a few talks, but like nothing crazy. It was mostly still a setup day for the villages. The merch line, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It was the merch line. I thought people were waiting in line for talks. So I was like, oh, okay, this is one line. This is another line. No, it looped around the floor upstairs one, you'd come down. And then at one point I was like, I'm sorry, is this the merch line? Cause I thought it was the end. And she was like, you know what? Yeah, it's the end, come on in. I was like, oh, if it's not like I can, I can go. And she was like, no, 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 it's, th they're taking their sweet time bringing people up so you can come in. Now I did come in and I did end up downloading the Hacker Tracker app. This was the official DEF CON 32 app, Hacker Tracker. On here is the merch and you could, now everything is obviously out of stock, but I could go through, pick, the merch that I wanted and then give them a QR code and they would literally just like prep everything for me. It was all cash only the merch store. I didn't have enough cash on me and there was honestly nothing in here that really tickled my fancy. Wandered around a bit more, did a few more loops, just kind of familiarized myself with the area and then I did end up leaving early to go and edit. My understanding is that previously, DEF CON would take place inside of a casino or an event center inside of a hotel. Now event centers inside of Vegas are insane. There's a few that I've personally seen, the one at Mandalay Bay, big, the one at the Paris is truly insane. That was where I went to CrimeCon. I don't know exactly where they were at previously, but there are some pretty massive event centers uh, inside of casinos and hotels in Vegas. Uh, this is the first year that they were at the Las Vegas Convention Center. And I do think for the most part, this was probably a good move because of the amount of space it was, but and there was a lot of people here. I would say it probably rivaled TwitchCon maybe at least that West Hall itself rivaled that when it came to CES. You're gonna notice there is next to no B-roll in this video. That is intentional. I did that on purpose. It's not that I forgot. It's not that I wasn't going to make a video. It's that I intentionally made the decision to do very little B-roll when I came here. There was this sign posted talking about photos, videos, no. And also for myself, when it comes to reviewing a space, I do have to be mindful about where I am, regardless of the fact that I'm a YouTuber and this is a visual medium. More than anything, I am a storyteller. I am explaining my experience in storytelling format, whether it's a review, a product review, or you know me doing something unhinged. I am telling a story. I can do that without video. I do prefer to do B-roll, but it's fine. In the sense of where this was, forget even, like I said, being a hacker does not automatically make you a criminal. There are people who probably don't 
you know, want to be on camera. And that goes with most conventions, but especially in a space like this where you could be, let's not say that anyone's doing anything actively bad, but maybe they are on a watch list or something. Not to say that anyone was, but you get my point. Like this is just, this is one of those spaces where I have to be mindful about where I am and the fact that, you know, someone going to an industry event, which is what this really was, is not opting into being a part of my insane YouTube event and showing the crowding and things like that. One of the things they specifically discourage against is crowd shots. So that's why you're gonna have to take my word for it for how crowded it could be. Friday, again, just kind of wandering around all the, uh, um, the villages are open. Villages are different themed sections. The first one that I walked into was the aerospace village, which understandably very aerospace <laughs> detail. There was a lock picking uh, section. There was a car hacking section, which was fascinating. That's really cool. Now, obviously I'm not a hacker, so I wasn't participating in any of the hack attempts or anything like that, or any of like the challenges or things like that. Uh, but it was really cool to just walk around and see people attempt and try different things and things like that. And seeing the different parameters posted around that was always very interesting to me. Villages all over the place. The physical security one is one that I spent quite a bit of time in. That was one that I was most interested in when it comes to lock picking, using a thing to open a door. There was also the vendor village. The lock picking section was in here. A couple of different hacking tools and things like that were in here as well. Don't ask me to explain what those are. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. Oh, um, the hacking uh, furries. Let me talk about that really quick. I always joke for myself internally um, that it's not a true Swell Entertainment convention interview if I don't see a furry. That's when I know I'm officially at a convention because furries will go to everywhere. However, there was actually, I think a smaller, more off the uh, more off the books as far as I can tell, like like in the know type of thing, furry hacker village. And this is where when I, I need to stop joking about becoming a social media anthropologist and actually going and getting a cultural anthropology degree because I do think that there's, there's something, there's a fascinating intersection between hacking and furries that obviously can came out fairly recently when it came to uh, Project 2025. There was a furry hacking group that was involved in the leak of that uh, self uh, shared is my understanding. A variety of people can be hackers. A variety of people, you know, can be furries and things like that. But I just, the intersection of both together is one that I see fairly regularly, especially when it comes to like Tumblr hackers and things like that and Twitter as well recently that I just find very interesting. I don't know what the, uh, the appeal is when it comes to hacking. I, what comes first? Realizing you're a hacker or realizing you're a furry? Does being a hacker give you the confidence to become a furry and like live as your furry self? I need a degree in this so I can just write papers on things like this versus just asking questions to a camera like you're gonna answer me. Okay, let's talk about the convention itself. The map was actually very well laid out and very well labeled, I will say that. Um, there was some you know discrepancies minor of like, like who sets up where, that type of thing. Very, very minor though for the most part. The map was very identical to the actual layout. And obviously because a lot of people are not going to be on their phones, uh, they do have the map printed up and blown up and displayed through various sections uh, throughout the convention floor, which I do think is good. Same with the schedule as well, uh, which is, I think, truly understanding your you know attendee base, which I talk about when it comes to furry conventions as well. Same thing, I'm not, I swear I'm not gonna keep talking about furries. So many conventions don't understand who their target attendee is and understanding who your target attendee is, is like the bare minimum that I need these conventions to be doing. So understanding that you have a uh, group that is going to not want to be on their phones, having a printed out program that has an accurate map and an accurate timetable, as well as physical versions around for anyone who doesn't want to carry things around, I think is the bare minimum. And I do appreciate that. Oh, there was no security, <laughs> like no security checkpoint, which I get again, when it comes to this type of a convention, I get it. However, oh well, wait, would metal detectors be a problem? The nature of this convention when you're encouraging hacking. Some people are going to have some more sensitive tech that probably can't go through a metal detector. You could have checked my bag once. That's all I'm saying. Something where I can't just walk in with my little, I could have stolen this off of some computer science person, okay? And I didn't. I, I bought it, but like you could have checked my bag. What if I had things? What if they're, what, like you guys are acknowledging you are dealing with a targeted group of individuals. Someone could think they are doing a service coming into a convention center that has very little security checkpoints is all I'm saying. Check a bag or seven. That's all I'm asking, <laughs> the bare minimum. Oh, there was a uh, section where you could hack voting machines. 
funny. There was the capture the flag thing. Obviously, I don't know how to explain that. I really don't. But as far as the actual like uh, audio things go, like when it comes to a panel and things like that, because of the different villages, there were a variety of different stages and panels happening and a variety of different talks. All of these that I went to were official talks. I did cite DEF CON official talk or panels and things like that uh, when I was searching through these and trying to find some that were interesting for myself. Because of the nature of the way the convention center is laid out, it's obviously one big room. They had very thick, for the most part, soundproof curtains hanging from the ceiling to the floor to block out noise and lights and things like that and try and help with the direction of the crowd uh, sounds and things like that and the mics and the speakers. These worked sometimes better than others. And obviously if you didn't have this and you were just talking into a crowd, the audios would kind of have a problem. Uh, but the, again, that's the nature of just these things being so loud. One of the talks I went to on Saturday that I ended up not being able to stay for, one, because there was not enough chairs, two, the audio was so bad. I was like, I'm straining trying to hear you. I don't like this, was a uh, talk about improv for social engineering. Arguably, this is what I do. It's a company that is hired to like tech check security protocols and things like that. Like, oh, can you break into my building? Can you hack my system? Things like that. Um, and they were explaining like the ways that they do quick changes, the way that they, you know, talk to a security guard, the way that they clone people's badges, things like that. Obviously I'm not doing that, but like the, the talking part is where I was trying to get to, but I couldn't hear them. They were on a small stage in the uh, physical security village and they had maybe 25 chairs maybe, and then just a very low speaker. I think the speaker was on the ground. And I think that's the problem. Interesting talk for what I did see. And they were going to have like people come up and like do like attempts with like the improv and things like that. It's like, a, would have liked to see that. It's fine. But I did also go in and play around with that with the, uh, the uh, lock picking and things are like that. They had a thing where you go in with like a, not a shiv, but a thing that goes through the door and then you use it to undo a deadbolt. I wasn't horrible at that, frankly. Uh, and uh, it's a blind door, obviously. And they're like, oh, well, usually this would work best on a glass door because that's usually what it's used on is on those things. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, internal doors. <laughs> Listen, I'm a writer and if I had less anxiety, I probably would have been a criminal. Let's be realistic. They had a couple of like cool challenges like that. There was one that was a sound booth where they actively were um, broadcasting to the room and had heart rate monitors on people that were doing like phone pishing attempts, like trying to get information from people and personal data from people over the phone. It was more like lockdown, my understanding, but uh, that's interesting. Things like that. Yeah, nefarious things were happening, okay? Do I think that's necessarily a problem? No, look where you're at. We're gonna start with the badge drama because I have a lot more takes on the room drama because I have some more examples to talk about it with. Like I said, these are completely hackable, which means that there is code that has to go into this. Apparently someone is claiming that their code was stolen for this. So this is the video that I saw that really kicked things off. This is from D Dimitri Grinberg. Today I joined a very exclusive club, the club of people who have been dragged off stage at DEF CON from the talk they were meant to participate in. Thanks to all who then came out to my outside talk. Glad I was able to answer all questions. It was fun. If you have more video angles of me being dragged off stage, please send it to me. And then a video of Dimitri being dragged off by a couple of goons. So this is from VX Underground for the information. DEF CON nerd drama. Disclaimer, the source of the following information is from various Reddit threads, Discord discussions, and Twitter conversations. We are unable to determine the validity of all the information shared. Some information can be confirmed because there is physical evidence present. The drama earlier today, approximately five hours ago, security researcher Dimitri Grinberg was escorted off the stage at DEF CON, making him one of the few individuals in convention history to be physically escorted off stage. The contents of the badge, code base, etc., was developed by Dimitri Brinberg and Mr. Grinberg states he gave no permission to DEF CON to use his code base on the badge. He states he will be issuing a DMCA notice to DEF CON soon. Mr. Grinberg also stated on Reddit, you can enable an Easter egg on the device by going FN, menu, about, select. When doing this, the badge will display Dimitri Grinberg's information, providing he is the developer. Additionally, Dimitri Grinberg said on Reddit, if you'd like a license to use the firmware, you can contact him and he will issue it to you. He will also sign badges for individuals and this will count as a license grant. He will be outside the DEF CON entrance at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning to sign badges, attachment one, him being um, escorted off stage, attachment to the Easter egg. DEF CON themselves on Twitter said, responding to the DEF CON badge controversy, DEF CON thrives on community collaboration and has operated for over 30 years successfully working with hundreds of vendors, including the dozens that have developed with our badges over the years. For this year's Raspberry Pi badges, DEF CON hired Entropic Engineering to do the hardware development and firmware. After going over budget by more than 60%, several bad faith charges and with a product still in pre-production, DEF CON issued a stop work order. And he claims 
that DEF CON did not pay Entropic Engineering for its hardware or firmware development are false. Unfortunately, we heard that these issues with Entropic Engineering are not unique to DEF CON. We decided at that point to finish the badge on our own. We paid to send engineers to Vietnam to work on site to finalize and test the badges in order to ensure they would be done on time for the conference. We never removed Entropic Engineering's logo from our badge. It is still on the PCB. Entropic was not involved in the design and production of the case and we removed their logo we added as a courtesy. We were happy to still include one of their contractors on the badge panel session. Unfortunately, shortly before the talk was set to take place, DEF CON became aware that unauthorized code had been included in the firmware. We had paid Entropic Engineering to produce, claiming credit for the whole badge and promoting their coin wallet to solicit money from DEF CON attendees above and beyond what we had negotiated. When asked about the unauthorized code, the engineer said it had been done as a joke, in quotes, two months ago and forgot to remove it. And we decided as an organization not to have him on stage while we kept the slides in the talk, giving him credit for his work. We communicated the change in advance of the talk and this individual decided to show up for the panel anyway. He refused to leave, demanding that our security team remove him, wanting to ensure that other people involved in creating the badge were able to deliver their presentation. We complied with his wishes and escorted him off stage where he was free to continue attending the conference. Any issues of non-payment are between him and Entropic Engineering. DEF CON fulfilled its financial obligations. And then Entropic Engineering Engineering also shared a letter. It's just a lot. But here, we're confused by and extremely disappointed in the decisions made institutionally by the conference this year. In addition to the agreed upon monetary compensation, which we have yet have been only partially provided, so they're claiming they have not been paid fully. Uh, we were promised visibility and representation as supporters and contributors to the community, badges for the team and conference attendance, participation in the badge talk, and credit announcements, signage, and on the badge case were all promised in return for work rendered. We were especially hurt and confused by the conference's choice to revoke all of the above. If as was offered as explanation, the badge project was truly out of funds when we were removed. We're especially curious how many thousands of dollars were then spent on the project of literally physically erasing our contributions and credit. Modifying a plastic injection mold so late in the game is pricey and additionally risky. For a hacking convention for your badges, did you not do a code check? Which seems to be the discussion that a lot of people are having. Like, why did you not do a code check? You're claiming that you had other people go and check these things. And someone said, so at a hacker convention, you didn't do a code review before releasing this into production because clearly hackers never hide things in their code. John Towell says, this is what likely actually happened. Their legal team, which is probably three guys working out of the back of a nail salon forgot to put a not to exceed in the SOW. Every consulting company knows to do this because they're not stupid. Two, the team goes over budget and obviously DEF CON has no protections and cuts bait because again, they're bad at contracts. This is the tweet saying this. They hire someone on Upwork or Craigslist to finish the work who clearly does the bare minimum. Anyone who has seen office space knows about the bare minimum. Four cows and sues to play the blame game instead of getting ahead of it. I mean, if this company was such a problem, did you firstly not do a proper background check, check references? There seems to be a lot of speculation about, you know, removing someone from stage and things like that. At the end of the day, this is why I do think that having specific security is important versus using, in this case, your goons to remove them. Because at the end of the day, they are volunteers. I don't think it's fair to put that onto your volunteers, but also usually security guards, there are more, I think, legal protections in this case. If there was an instance where it said, we need to have you removed, I don't think that should have been put onto the goons in this case, or which it looks like they are because of the red shirts. Regardless of what the circumstances were, I don't think that should have been a job for your volunteers, frankly. I think that is setting yourself up for legal trouble. Okay, let's talk about the room searches. Cause I have something to weigh in on with this one. I have a lot of experience with Vegas room searches. Are you excited? So funny enough, I have had my room searched in Vegas quite a few times. Why? Cause I go to events in Vegas. Okay, so this is from the DEF CON Reddit from mgoose4063. DEF CON attendees, before I explain what happened, let me clarify that this was my own personal experience. I'm not talking on behalf of the other people affected by this incident. There's this hotel that's engaging in random room inspections specifically to DEF CON 32 attendees. They're targeting attendees on the grounds of making sure we, in parentheses, are not a threat or have devices that can compromise their network security. In a very aggressive way, they demanded us to open our rooms to go through all of our stuff. We asked them uh, to give us time to confirm what they were asking was legit and legal, and they got mad and demanded to open the door or else they were going to call the police and charge us with trespassing. Things escalated very quickly, and armed security guards came with the intention of breaking the door to get us. 
Since they couldn't reason, I decided to just open the door. They aggressively asked for our IDs, started reading our, some policy out loud, and then escorted us out of the property without a care in the world. On our way down the hall, there were many more security personnel knocking on doors and getting people out, just like a drug raid. First and foremost, so I should say, the rooms that I have dealt with room checks at is the Sahara and the Flamingo, okay? And I'm I'm sure there's others, but those are the two main ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, the Sahara, I no longer stay at because of another security situation. It was very similar to what they described, but it was, I was literally going to Vegas for my friend's bridal shower. And I had been in the room for a whopping five minutes between before security started pounding on the door and saying they got a room complaint for my room. There was nothing. I later got confirmation that it was another room on my floor that had caused the noise complaint, but they came and screaming at me and scared the shit out of me. I, I was I terrified. I never went back there again. I still won't. I still won't go back to Sahara. This letter that they got from Resorts World is very similar to the one that I got from Sahara when they did a room check during TwitchCon last year because when we were young, Fest was happening that same weekend. And my room overlooked when we were young fest. You seeing why I had to deal with this? The other one at Flamingo, my room overlooked the F1 track. Do I need to spell it out? Um, since the shooting in Vegas, Amandalay Bay a few years ago, when there was massive events, they usually go and check the rooms now that overface those events. They will look for guns. They will flip things over. They will go through things. For the most part, they just said, hey, ma'am, can you please leave the room while we go and search through these things? For Vegas, specifically for F1, that is what it was. They said, we need you out of the room. Are you the only one in here? Is anyone else in here? No. Okay. We need you to step out into the hallway. They do a quick check. They check a few things to make sure I'm not hiding something scary. And that's really it. When I came to the room check specifically, I have not heard anything of this magnitude and this aggression, but too many different people are sharing these accounts of like, this is my experience with them going through my room while I was in there. That's a problem. And it's mostly coming out of Resorts World from what I'm hearing for the record. Dear valued guests, welcome. And thank you for choosing Resorts World Las Vegas. We are pleased to have you that you joined us and you have chosen to stay with us for relaxation, fun, and excitement. As you may or may not know, a well-known hacking convention will be held in Vegas during your stay. We remain committed to our guest safety and understand the utmost importance of cybersecurity as well. In an effort to increase the safety of our guests, we will be conducting scheduled, brief, visual, and non-intrusive room inspections daily beginning Monday, August 5th. Rooms with a privacy sign will be included as part of the inspection process, which means if you have the do not disturb sign on, they don't really give a shit. They will come in anyway. And then there was also, do, 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 do. I've never reserved a room in the DEF CON block and now I definitely never will. DEF CON Resorts World LV. I will never rent a room at your hotel. Not when I'm there annually for DEF CON sales kickoff or World Series of Poker. DEF CON room checks, see something, say something. The world's longest running hacking convention will be held here on property beginning on August 8th. Housekeeping and security will be be tasked with conducting room checks on all stay over rooms daily beginning Monday, August 5th through Monday, August 12th, regardless of DND status. It sounds like this was what was given to hotel staff and that this was just leaked. No later than 9 a.m. each day, housekeeping assistant director will run and print rooming list for all hotel guests reserved through the DEF con group block. Yes, you are renting a room, but if you are on technically on private property, they have the right to do this. Do I think it's fair for them to do this? No. Uh, legally though, I don't know what the ramifications potentially are, or if there is any, because you are essentially like leasing a space, I think. So I don't know. It's not like renting an apartment. I don't know what the uh, protections are there. I did see a lot of people saying they need to get DEF CON out of Vegas. I don't know where else you could put it. Vegas is desperate for money. They will take your money regardless. So yes, there's things that you're going to have to deal with like potentially people that are a little more jumpy when it comes to hacking, but um, they will not, you know, cancel it, for example, for you hacking while there, you know, because Vegas wants events and money and things like that. Anyways, that's really going to be it. Uh, would I go again? Not really for me. That's just my thing. It, it's very, it's a very cool event. Very interesting. I always like seeing things that I like this, like what my life could have been like if I was better at math and stick stuck with uh, computer science. Cause I probably would have gone into cybersecurity. Honestly, it was something that I very found very interesting. Uh, the cost it's a conference. It's priced more like a conference. Honestly, I think you probably could charge more. It's a three to four day event. There's quite a lot here. Um, it is a, for the most part, like a business conference convention for just cybersecurity and hackers. Uh, so pricing it 400 bucks over that's, 
I think fairly reasonable when you look at the context of the event. There's quite a lot here. As far as the, you know, criticisms I see of like, oh, live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I see this, unfortunately, a lot with a lot of conventions that, you know, are made in, in response to something else. It usually does eventually grow because it becomes the industry standard. And then the industry standard, you just get more criticism to it. So is that a good or bad thing? Is there a follow up to that? I don't really know. Would love to hear any responses for anyone else that was at DEF CON that has any other notes that you would like to share. Would love to hear it. Any other things that you think anyone can do to keep themselves safe while traveling? If you'd like more people to attend DEF CON or not attend DEF CON, are you annoyed I was there? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I stream on Twitch. Reminder, this one is now available on Spotify. Reminder to use code SWELL for 10% off on Gamer Subs. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. I am now going to be ending the Patreon. Is officially happening. Uh, we now have channel memberships. They are set up down below. A little bit of growing pains. It's a whole new program for me to realize and figure out, but we are going to be making the switch because Patreon sucks. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. That's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Oh, there was a DJ the entire time on the ground level. On the floor, on the first floor, there was always a DJ going, and it was DJ Pi. Like pie? That's fun. I like that. Thank you, Adira, Amy, Andrew, Ayana, Cameron, Donnie, Elliot, Freya, Jeffrey, Jenny, Literal, Mae West, Michael, Nathan, Oz, Palace, Querty, Robert, Tasha, Tenzin, Thomas, Timothy, Winters, Wink.